10 photography mistakes to avoid when taking photos with any camera and how to fix them. Hey guys, it's Ben Taylor here from Ben's Guide. Welcome to the video. In the next 10 minutes, you're gonna see 10 photography mistakes to avoid if you want to improve your photography and start taking better photos. If you're new to the channel, hit subscribe if you enjoy photography, filmmaking, and editing videos. Just before we get into it, if you actually wanna help other photographers who are just starting out like we were back in the day, then please share photography mistakes that you often see and how you would go about fixing them. You can share these in the comment section below the video. And this could be a huge help for any beginner photographers watching today's video. This is one of the biggest problems that I see over and over again. Most times this can actually be avoided just ensuring that your shutter speed is higher. So if you're shooting handheld, you can actually just raise your shutter speed and set it at around about two times your focal length. If you're shooting with 24 millimeter lens, one over 50th of a second, with a 50 millimeter lens, one over a hundredth of a second, an 85 millimeter lens, one over 150th, and so on. Now this can be very much based on if the lens has IS or image stabilization, or if your camera has in-body stabilization. This will mean that you can have a lower shutter speed and you won't get blurry photos. Now, if you're actually shooting moving subjects, ensure that you're shooting with a shutter speed of about one over 500th of a second or higher. But if they're fast moving subjects, like you might see wildlife or sports, then just crank up your shutter speed to one thousandth of a second or higher. This is something that I see a lot, usually a mistake which is made by beginner photographers. The highlights are overexposed and also when the highlights become overexposed, you can't correct your highlight exposure in Lightroom or any other post-processing software for that matter. But how do we fix this then? It's a simple fix. You can use your camera's histogram and ensure that your highlights do not touch the right side. When they go into the right side and touch the line, you nearly always lose the ability to fix the problem. So if you have bright highlights, clipping the edge or getting close to clipping the edge, darken your image a bit in camera to expose your highlights. Then brighten the shadows in Lightroom and then you'll get a perfect balanced exposure. I often see photographers who are using their photo editing software to make image adjustments to a JPEG photo. They are left with color artifacts and image degradation. Now, what you don't understand is this is going to ruin the image. It's simple though, if you really want to get a nice image when you're editing, then avoid using JPEGs altogether. When you're photo editing, make sure you instead shoot with RAW. JPEGs are compressed, you see, and that means that you will lose information, whereas RAW is uncompressed. That means you'll keep the information. You also have a lot more information in a RAW image, which you can use more effectively when editing. So avoid this mistake by shooting in RAW. Too many elements in the photo is a surefire way to spoil your composition. The way to quickly fix this is to simplify your scene. Shoot images containing just a few elements. This gives your viewer a clear understanding of what's important in your composition. And it enables them to enjoy it visually instead of being distracted by many different elements. I often see the wrong lens used in portrait photography. Also, all the genres of photography actually. When shooting portraits using a wide angle lens, you can distort the face of your subject. Whereas using the correct lens, like an 85 millimeter, it will look natural and it will give you the right result. Some golden rules I follow always. For group shots, use a wide angle lens between 16 to 35 millimeters. For portraits, use a 50 millimeter lens for full body or half body shots. 
and an 85 to 100 millimeter for headshots. Now with landscapes, you can use wide angle lenses between 16 to 30, five millimeters for wide open spaces. Get as much of that beautiful landscape in your photo as you can. 70 to 200 millimeters for tighter crops where you want to fill your complete frame with an element of the landscape instead of the whole scene. Now with sports photography and wildlife photography, you want to be close into the action from a distance that's not on top of your subject. So using a telephoto zoom lens like the 70 to 200 or 100 to 400 millimeter would be a great choice. When you start out learning editing, it's really easy to get drunk on power. <laughs> what I mean is you suddenly have the ability to make huge changes to your photos with just one click of a few buttons. I guarantee you though, that if you look back on your original work in a year or two, you will cringe at those original edits. Over editing is a common mistake that beginner photographers make. It's easy to fix though, because you can actually just start by fixing issues in the photo instead of trying to make big, bold changes. So if your photo is too dark, just start by fixing a little bit of an issue by brightening the shadows and maybe adding some contrast because the image is too flat. Maybe push up the vibrance or the saturation and increase the color if it's a little bit dull and uninspiring. You'll be surprised that just fixing these obvious issues in the photo, you can make a big overall improvement. And then if you want to edit some more areas, you can. But always focus on the small changes first and you won't over edit your photos. This is one of the biggest reasons people don't get started learning photography. This is because they focus too much on the gear early on. I started with a Canon 700D a kit lens and a lovely little nifty 50 f1.8. This was low end, certainly low cost camera setup, and it's definitely not a professional one. Now I focus on learning photography getting to grips with the basics so I could improve my photography. And I was actually even able after a few months to get a little bit of paid work doing product photography. And this was using that very setup with the Canon 700D. I then slowly started upgrading my gear over time. And when I was getting an income from my photography work, I started buying some of that nice new gear. And that's what you should be focusing on. You should focus on learning to begin with, and then you can start thinking about the latest gear. One thing that I advise that you avoid though is going on things like Facebook groups and seeing the conversations where people are talking about gear. Of course, unless that actually provides inspiration. I understand this is really basic, getting a wonky horizon, and it's so easy to fix, but it's something that you see in photographs quite often and it can potentially ruin a beautiful photograph. All you need to do to get a straight horizon every time is to use the grid lines in your camera. You can then line these up with your horizon and get a beautiful photo. If you forget this, of course, there is another way and it can be fixed inside Lightroom or you can use other post-processing software and use a horizon leveling tool. People starting out in photography are using their camera a lot of the time. They look in their back screen to read their exposure. The camera screen will not show you how light or dark your image is. Your screen has a screen brightness setting, and this is used to make it lighter or darker. So when you look at the screen, you don't want to think that this is actually the exposure of your scene. You always want to use your histogram. The histogram shows light areas, mid-tone areas, and dark areas. If you go too far this way, it's going to be too bright. If you go too far this way, it's going to be too dark. When it's balanced like this, then you have good exposure. Of course though, if you want to create a specific look that is dark and moody or very bright, then you can of course bend these rules because you're creating your own desired stylish look. 
One of the biggest differences between average photographers and great photographers is intent. Many times you will see a photographer turn up, he sticks his camera in high continuous mode and shoots off a load of photos. And this usually happens without them taking the time to really look around the surroundings. This is a shame because when this is done regularly, this creates a bad habit in your photography and then your photography suffers. You need to have a clear goal. You need to have meaning behind each photo that you capture, and you can actually really see this in someone's work. A great photographer will have intent either before he arrives at the shoot or what he wants to achieve when he gets there. Alternatively, when he arrives at the scene like a landscape, spends time looking around and feeling the atmosphere, there the intent is created to capture the scene the way he sees it and experiences it. This doesn't just improve your photography, by the way. After a while, it greatly improves your experience and your connection with your surroundings.